Hey folks, welcome to Market Technical Analysis by InTheMoneyStocks.com, your leader in pure technical analysis, avoiding all that Wall Street hype. Today, Monday, July 14th, 2008. Well, as we get into today's video, folks, we're going to discuss the unique market picture that we're seeing right now. Because what we're having in this market is a, a breakdown below a possible pivot point that we had called for last week. And we finally closed below the key levels that we were looking for for a possible negation. Now, if that is truly a negation, what we need to see tomorrow is confirmation on the downside. All right, And we'll watch for that tomorrow. And then I'm going to show you on the chart here the key level that we'll watch for the market to rebound to at some point in the near future. And once it gets above that, then we start looking for that rally again. Okay, And that's going to be a very simple line. And I'll give you the approximate price of what we see that as in this market. Because really what you're seeing today and what you saw today was a gap up in the market on that Freddie and Fannie Mae news, where basically the government said they were going to back those guys um, and make sure that the in investors, and I'm using quotes with my fingers, investors held, held their share of the company, meaning that they weren't going to take Take over those companies, and they were going to still, you know, if they had to, you know, back all the loans and all that stuff, so that those companies don't go under because it would be too much of a kill shot to the economy. But in the same instance, they're not going to. They, they were saying basically they weren't going to take over the companies, which would kill uh, shareholder value and make the stock go to zero. All right, so that's the key there, and why we gapped up. But let's be honest, we did not hold those gains today, guys. Uh, the market from the opening it gapped up, and we just started to sell, 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 sell. And then like we've seen so many times, late afternoon you had a late day rally where the Dow actually went positive. The NASDAQ was only down a couple points and the market could not hold that gain again. It rallied all the way up from basically 315 to 345, give or take, and then you had to sell off again into the close where we closed near the lows again, at least on the S&P futures and on the NASDAQ. The Dow really did not have a much of a down day today. And in all fairness, the markets were not that much you know, to the downside, not like we've seen lately. The Dow was down 45 points. The NASDAQ was down 26, which was a little more on the heavier side for the NASDAQ. And the S&P was down about 11 points. But nonetheless, you had a, a basic continued uh, inability of this market to carry gains. Whenever the market's gapping up or rallying late in the day, it just cannot hold those gains. And there's going to be a key level, as mentioned, that we have to look for now in this market. And I want to get into this trading session and do a kind of play-by-play -play for you guys uh, just so we can understand really what's going on in this market because it is one of the most fascinating markets you've ever seen in your life, we've ever seen in our lives, and it possibly we ever will see. So keep an eye on this market. Now, one thing I want to show you here, and this is the daily chart of the ES, so I don't really want to look at that right away. What I want to flip to is the intraday ES, and this is the ESU8 contract, the September 08 E-mini S&P 500 contract. And what you're basically going to see here is the market rallying early in the day, and we were up even last night. Sunday night on the East Coast here, I checked the futures, and we were up substantially, uh, basically about 15 points on the S&P, which is sizable. And what you see is the continued rally up here into the open or early morning hours. Right around 8 o'clock, we top out. 8, 7.30, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, you top out, and then it's a slow drag. And here we go, right into the market open. And this is where the market opens, right here, right at the 20 moving average. Notice how, interestingly enough, you're right below. The top of that candle is right at the 20, and that's the last that this market sees of that level all day. Because you just start to sell, you get a little bit of a bounce and pause, another sell-off bounce, pause, sell off, all the way down to this level. Now this is the key level for today because this is where we hold the rest of the day. Notice on this, on the intraday chart, you never get a close below that level. And those of you that like to play these type of moves, notice it's coming right before lunch. And then also notice that we never take out that low. So those of you that take shots on that, once you get a bounce off and you get a retrace down there, that's oftentimes you, you want to take that shot on a long side to test it out. Obviously, first close below this point, that's your exit strategy. So my point is, as a trader, you're always trying to, the first thing you look of it in a trade, and the first thing I look at in a trade is what am I going to lose? I don't care about what I'm going to make. I care about minimizing my loss. Where's my exit strategy and how small can I make it? And that's how small you make it. You retest the low, you double bottom there, and you can pick it up you know, in this range, and then you basically put your stop at a close of a closing candle below there. And again, notice here, you got a nice rally. You could have sold there if you wanted or held. And then you could have, you got that late day rally I talked about where the market actually, the Dow actually went positive. The NASDAQ was just down a couple points. But look at the selling that came in again, and we just dumped right back. But nonetheless, a beautiful little bottom worked into this market. And that's going to be a key level for you to watch tomorrow in the market as well. Do we take that out? Do we rally back above it? Are we able to hold that level? This, le this market needs to take 
baby steps at this point. All right. Um, you guys know, obviously, and we'll just take a look at this market, that this was a, our low point. We did not want to see uh, taken out in this market. Hang on. Let me just draw that in. All right. You're basically looking at this point right here, right around here. And we did tick below that on the futures today. So now what we're going to watch for is a recapture on the upside of that move or, con or uh, continued um, move to the downside, all right? So we want to keep a close eye on that, all right? And the market did close, in all fairness, the futures closed down in this area today as that candle's not in there. Um, and we can put that in quickly here. There you go. So you can see that. So our turn date here was the low right here from this day. Once you got to close below this area, that's when you want to start looking for a confirmation move to the downside. And we're going to show you it on the SPY. Here's the SPY, which mirrors the S&P as well. And again, the level here to watch was this point. Let me draw it in as accurately as I could do. All right, so the low from our turn date here, and to see, once you close below here, what you look for is confirmation. Now, how do you get confirmation? Well, you get a move lower than this candle the next day. That signals confirmation. So number one, you want to look for confirmation tomorrow. And if we get confirmation, then basically the point you're going to look for is you ignore the market on the upside from that point on. All right, until we recapture this line. To us, this is a key line right here from our turn date, signaling our calculations being a key level. And until we get a pushback above that level, this market has to be considered a dangerous market, exceptionally dangerous, and you have to be on high alert. Okay, so watch that level in the markets as this calculation is based on price pattern and time being a key level. Now today we obviously, they basically, and the interesting thing here folks, I want to point this out, our key level was here. Look at how many days you tested it. You tested it here, bounced up and rallied. You tested it on Friday and they closed it, even though it was below, they closed it above. Today it couldn't do that. The financials are just too much of a stress on this market. Oil had could not fall. It didn't exactly move up, but it could not fall at all. Oil was basically flat on the day. You had the financials insanely weak. Washington Mutual was down 30% today. Uh, it's looking like it's the next one that's going to need either a bailout or to go under or to be taken out like Bear Stearns. Uh, there are a lot of crazy things out there in this market right now, and it's dangerous. So at this point, really, once we, until we recapture this line, and we'll continue to monitor this line, on the SPY, it's about 123.90, 124-ish, give or take. That's going to be the key line. Uh, as long as you stay below, especially if we, we uh, give that signal on the downside by breaking the low, and if we take out the low of this candle tomorrow, uh, that's what you really want to see, and then you could see more downside. So keep a close eye on that on the daily, and we're talking about daily closes here when we're looking at the daily chart. On the intraday, again, I pointed this out. You can see we obviously had some supports held on the SPY from uh, from Friday, and that's an interesting thing to note as well, and I wanted to point that out, all right? So keep a close eye on the SPY, and I'm gonna move this back so we can get a better view. The lows on, on SPY, which is the mirroring, again, the S&P, were at this point here on Friday, all right? Look at where we hit support today. How unique is that? Those of you that love seeing parity in charts and symmetry, look at that. All right, did we get one close below the lows? Absolutely not. So that's something else, and that's why I keep saying in this is you really want to see confirmation to the downside. At this point, we've taken out the lows from our turn date, which is not a good thing on the downside. But now let's see if the SPY can actually get below here on the 10 minute. We'll watch for support being there tomorrow as well. All right, keep a close eye on it. Very very unique. We did make a new low here, but it never closed below that point. So again, going back to the daily chart, you can see right here, let me move that little thing right there. You can see the low from Friday and the low today, virtually the same point, and uh, that's the level you want to watch for confirmation tomorrow on the downside. Now, if we have an inside bar here, then we can start looking again, but really until you get above this line right here, uh, you got to be you know super cautious. We recapture that and confirm with another up move after it, then you start to get very, very positive on the market again. But until then, you have to be careful of these financials. And I want to show you a couple things, guys. Washington Mutual, look at this drop today. $1.70 down $1.72 on the daily chart there. On the intraday, look at this drop. All right, down $1.72 to $3.23. I mean, it doesn't get more ugly than that. Uh, Freddie... Uh, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae down today. And again, everyone was so bullish on this after last night. You had the gap up today. But one thing I will point out, guys, and I find this extremely unique, um, note how on Thursday you closed here. And I pointed this out in the last video. Friday you opened up down 50% and rallied all the way back to go positive. And then you had it basically closed flat on the day. And then obviously this morning it was gapped up on the news, but it sold off. And you'd say, well, why? This was good news. Because, guys, and, I, and I, you know, this is just speculation, so take it with a grain of salt. Someone down here knew what was coming out Sunday night, 
and this was all bought up by institutions or something. I mean, again, it's speculation on my part. I'm somewhat of a of a theorist in this regard. But you're telling me that someone over here didn't know what was going on and it rallied back 50%. Because if this had stayed down here, folks, uh, then you would have had a big move today. But you obviously didn't. So the fact that it sold off today tells me the news was already known. It was already factored in. And we have to take that. So there's nothing you can do about it as an individual trader. You just have to be aware of it. And I try to point these things out so everyone can understand and learn. All right, so take everything with a grain of salt. Gap ups are never a good thing in the market unless it's a gap and run. And then you see great strength or a short squeeze. But as of now, the gap up today was just an excuse to sell again. And that's what happened. All right, Google, Apple, Baidu, uh, Baidu, Baidu, and Google were very, very weak today. Keep an eye on that, folks. Apple was the only strength in tech, not tech land today. So be careful. So again, watch those key levels on the SPY. Let's punch those in on the daily. There you go. Have a wonderful day, folks. We will talk to you tomorrow. Take care.